Thank you for joining us. I am Anwe Gross, the Executive Director of the Oklahoma Policy Institute. During the last two months, our policy team has been looking at state and federal policies that impact Oklahomans during this national emergency. Among the issues that we have elevated is the question of evictions in Oklahoma. Open Justice Oklahoma, a program of OK Policy, has been looking very closely at this issue. Today, I'm joined by Ryan Gensler, the director of Open Justice Oklahoma, to answer questions we've been hearing from you. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. So to get us started, why don't you tell us a little bit about the eviction problem in Oklahoma overall? Uh, well, it's important to know that Oklahoma has had a big problem with evictions uh, long before this emergency started. There are about 42,000 evictions that are filed each year and about half of those, about 22,000, are granted. So they result in a person being removed from their home um, each year. Uh, there are about 14,000 filings that are made each year in Oklahoma and Tulsa counties. That's where the problem is worst. Um, and about 7,000 of those are uh, granted in each, each county uh, per year. So that puts uh, Tulsa uh, at number 11, uh, in the country for the most evictions filed uh, or the most evictions granted per uh, per capita. Uh, Oklahoma City, they're number 20. So in both places, the problem is very deep. Um, and this is a very destabilizing event in, in the lives of many families. Um, it's easy to lose a job, um, to uh, have to move schools. Um, and it's very easy to uh, to face the situation when you just lose, uh, miss one paycheck or miss a couple days of work. So when we're thinking about, uh, you know, this massive uh, unemployment crisis that we're facing now, um, this is, uh, the eviction problem here is going to get much worse, unfortunately. So let's talk about that just a little bit. Um, in terms of the COVID-19 emergency, how has evictions or the, the conversation of evictions changed in Oklahoma? Uh, well, the state uh, emergency was declared on March 15th, um, and then the courts were closed by an order of the Supreme Court on March 17th. Um, so most activity, most evictions ended um, or paused uh, on March 17th. Uh, that's not the case everywhere, however, because the Supreme Court allowed some uh, allowed courtrooms across the country or across the, the state to make their own decisions on which cases they would hear um, and how they would. So our uh, Open Justice Oklahoma, uh, we started tracking these filings since the emergency started. Um, as of today, there are 1,768 evictions filed since March 15th. Um, those can all be heard when courts reopen um, next Monday on May 18th. Um, and that's in addition to all the cases that were pending before the emergency uh, was issued. So we're talking about thousands of cases uh, that could come before the courts in the matter of uh, weeks. Um, and again, this is a problem uh, because we know that um, each court can basically decide how this, this is going to go. Um, and we don't know what, what they're going to decide. So either they open up and there are, you know, hundreds of families potentially um, waiting in the halls for their eviction proceedings, which is a very bad decision during uh, when we're supposed to be social distancing, um, you know, or they could, uh, if they don't show up, the, their evictions will go through automatically. So um, this is a, a big crisis that's about to hit us um, starting next week. So, Ryan, what about the CARES Act, the federal bill that passed um, just recently? Did it provide any um, assistance around evictions? It did. The CARES Act um, prevents or suspends evictions for um, any property that receives federal funding. So that includes properties that have a federally backed mortgage, which is the vast majority of mortgages, um, or if they receive uh, some sort of uh, rental assistance like Section 8 funding um, or other forms of uh, rental assistance. Um, so those uh, properties uh, cannot have an eviction filed until uh, near the end of July. Um, and there's a 30 day waiting period until that eviction can be granted. Um, so that delays any eviction proceedings uh, or any 
evictions until the end of August, essentially. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't protect uh, the rest of the renters uh, across the country in, in, in Oklahoma. So uh, anywhere from uh, 50 to 75 percent of the evictions uh, will probably be uh, not covered by uh, the CARES Act. Just in case we have any legislatures who might be listening to our podcast and we have the opportunity to give them some recommendations for the last few weeks, what do you think our policymakers should be doing um, for people that are at risk of eviction? I think the, the best thing that could happen would be an eviction moratorium uh, to be placed. Um, and that would have to go into, uh, that would have to be done by the governor or the legislature. Um, Supreme Court could also um, delay hearings, but they've already kind of issued their their hearing their uh, rules, so we don't expect to see much more from them. Uh, OK Policy uh, joined with our partners at Action Tulsa um, to call on the governor to issue a statewide eviction moratorium uh, for all properties that uh, mirrors the the provisions of the CARES Act. Um, we think that's a very reasonable step to take. Um, to keep people in their homes during this very uh, critical time as we try to prevent the, the spread of the coronavirus. Um, but we also, that's not going to be enough because landlords need uh, to, to keep uh, you know, their income uh, coming in uh, and people just need, uh, you know, need money for their basic expenses. So uh, we, we really believe that the, federal government should be doing more to provide financial assistance um, throughout this crisis um, that can, you know, much of that will probably go to rent, uh, but, you know, basic needs uh, you know, writ large are, are a very big problem and, and need to be addressed by the federal government as well. So Ryan, our, our last question is for those people that are, are really at need, where can someone go to get some advice or some assistance if they're facing eviction problems right now? Uh, the best thing to do is to uh, call 211 um, to be connected to resources uh, for, uh, there are organizations that do rental assistance, that do uh, legal representation for free. Um, so those are both uh, very important resources. Um, in addition, their uh, Legal Aid Oklahoma has a disaster legal services hotline. Uh, that number is 888-602-8494. Um, you can also go to oklegalconnect.org okay uh, and uh, be connected to uh, free legal assistance um, if you qualify. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you to everyone who has been sending us questions and comments about this topic. I encourage you to stay engaged in our work and follow us on social media, or you can subscribe to our emails or advocacy alerts. And if you would like to financially support our work, I encourage you to visit okpolicy.org donate to learn more. Thank you for watching. Thank you.